Good morning, everyone. This is Julie McDonald with Microcom Technologies, and I'd like to thank all of you for attending today's webinar with Netgear. Today's host is our good friend, Mr. Jordan Cooper, and he is the account manager for California, Texas, and Hawaii, representing, of course, Netgear. He'll be presenting and if you have any questions, please submit them in the and Jordan will be able to answer them at the end of today's presentation. Jordan, thank you so much for being with us again today. We greatly appreciate you here at Microcom. I am finished for now. Please go ahead and take it on over. Will do. Thanks, Julie. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. As Julie said, my name is Jordan. I'm an account manager over here at, at Netgear. Um, <clears throat> wide, right out the gate, I like to, if you've been to one of my webinars before, one of the things that I like to talk about is that, uh, well, um, it may look and sound like I know what I'm talking about. I, I know a good amount, but uh, no engineer. So keep that in mind when it comes to some of the questions that I'll answer as best that I possibly can, um, especially on today's category. You know, today we're going to be talking about Nick, your switching portfolio. Um, you know, as I kind of thought about what I wanted to present on, on today's uh, webinar and um, things that I wanted to share with the world, uh, it came, came to me that I deal a lot of times with customers and people calling into Netgear that uh, don't know all the switches that we have. You know, I, every day I hear it all the time of, oh, I didn't know Netgear had that switch, or oh, I didn't know Netgear played in that arena. And so I thought it'd be a great time to get a good overview of all of our switches. Uh, we've got a lot, and so there was, it was kind of very difficult to um, consolidate and get everything into a reasonable time. Um, so there's gonna be a lot of stuff that um, we won't really dive in depth into. <clears throat> this will just be a, a good overview. Of, of all of our switches and the portfolios that we have and we offer. If you've been a part of my webinar before, I kind of follow the same agenda that we usually do. I usually like to share a little bit about company facts about Netgear, talking about the Netgear difference, uh, and then that's when we're going to get into the uh, naming convention or how Netgear kind of names our SKUs. That'll that'll really help you identify and be able to learn and know what a SKU has and what its features are based upon the name. Then we're going to talk about getting into the categories first with unmanaged, then we're going to get into the smart and cloud followed by fully managed. And we're gonna get into our AV. Hopefully you know of our AV. If you don't, or if you play in the AV space, really wanna pay attention to that AV side of things. It gets really great. We have some really great things there. Go and talk about the takeaways. So getting right into it, let's talk about the company facts. You know, I'm not gonna read everything slide by slide and line by line. You know, everyone can read on here. So, uh, but just, this is a good information to know that Nick is doing a little over a billion dollars in revenue with a little over a thousand employees. You know, and why does that matter? Just just goes to show that Necker's a big enough company, and we're lean with just a little over a thousand employees. I think we're at like 1,100 employees over 25 different countries. So we're small enough to care. You know, we, you, you don't have to be spending $500,000 with us to matter to Netgear. Um, you know, we are headquarters out in San Jose, and we're publicly traded. And then a big thing with Netgear here that I like to always point out too when it comes time to Netgear is, and that I always get asked too, what makes Netgear different than other competitors? And we always try to make sure that all of our products meet these three categories, right? We want to be reliable and affordable and easy to use. And we feel like there's very, very few manufacturers out there in the market that actually meet all three. You might know of a couple, you know, as you kind of talk, that maybe uh, are reliable and uh you know, maybe are affordable, but are not easy to use or vice versa. They're very affordable and they're very easy to use, but are they reliable? And Netgear always wants to make sure that every product that we come out with, whether it's going to be a switch or an access point or a, a router meets and, and hits these these three criteria here. And so that's that's kind of the crux of Netgear's goal when it comes time to any product that we have. So getting right into it, here is the naming scheme that we kind of have. Now, this is a good... Uh, this, this covers a majority of our switches. There are going to be some few outliers, maybe some few older switches that didn't quite get adopted into this naming scheme quite yet. Um, but this this fits for probably about 90% of the Netgear, all of our Netgear switches. So anything that you're going to start with a G, that's going to be a standing for a gigabit switch. Uh, anything that starts with an X, that's going to be a 10 gig switch. So you'll see like GS, it's a gigabit switch, or you'll see XS, it's a 10 gig switch. Then part of the name you're going to see, you're going to see a P, which generally means POE for the most part. Um, there are some exceptions to that where most of the switches that we're doing now um, that we'll talk about here in a minute, they have just a single P in their name, but they also they do POE plus, meaning each watt is capable of doing up to 30 watts of POE power um, instead of the 15. But in the name general 
you'll see a single P means PoE, double P means PoE plus, and then UP is the PoE plus plus or ultra PoE, as kind of what most people have called it. If in the name you do see an M, generally that's going to be meaning that it's going to be multi-gig capable. And that multi-gig is usually one, two and a half, and it's even up to five gigs of multi-gig. Then if it has a T in the name, it means it's a smart. The T kind of means it thinks. So you know that's going to be a, a smart managed switch, meaning it has like a layer two plus, uh, maybe even a layer three light, as some other so people call it as far as uh, capabilities. And then lastly, if it has an E, it means it's a basic kind of, your basic smart switch, you're very limited on the, what it can do, but it does have some, it does have a GUI and it can be some management. So let's kind of talk a little bit about uh, going into, you know, when it comes time to picking out the right switch and when figuring out which switch is right for you. Um, you know, it, hopefully by now, as, as you guys have all deployed a lot of switches out there in the network that you know that clearly the trouble is, is trying to find one, a, a switch that's not only going to be future proofing you, you know, and, and, and being able to last. I feel like it, we always want to refresh every three to five years, but I feel like a lot of companies out there like to try to push that boundary seven, eight, even 10 years before they have to do a network refresh. Uh, but then also, you know, finding out at the right price and, and finding one that gonna, is going to fit and kind of encompass the growth that you're going to experience. So you know, we've got a really unique challenge as, uh, as a networking company and as those who people out there who are MSPs or installers, integrators, you know, they've got that challenge too to kind of keep all those in mind and try to help making sure that their customers know that they need to make sure that you don't want to just throw in an eight port switch here uh, if in the road you're experiencing, uh, you know, let's say a year or two down the road you're, you're growing and you're going to quickly need a 16 or even a 24 port, um, you know, so there's a lot of factors that go into switching. And so that's why Netgear honestly has probably one of the largest and switching portfolios and, and all the manufacturers we've got a lot of lot of switches out there a lot of us know uh the unmanaged switches gosh if i can tell you i mean i bet almost every single one of you have at least dealt with an unmanaged neck your switch on this call right now right today we just you know there's so many out there and for, and for great reason i mean these are switches that just uh just run and run and run i mean right here saying that built to last that is 100% true. Uh, not too long ago, I got sent a, a picture from one of my partners, and he had sent me a picture of this 24-port, uh, uh, super dusty, super dirty, just covered in, in dirt and everything, hair, uh, and it was still running. Uh, and you know, he's like, "This, this, this needs to be replaced." And and anyway, we had a good laugh about that. And, and I was trying to find that picture to hopefully throw up on there. But anyway, it's just it's one of those things that, yep, they are they're built to last. They'll run and run and run forever. They're very easy to put in, plug and play, no management, nothing done. And, uh, and we've got a, quite a few different switches ranging in there. We've got you know things from a five port all the way up to a 48 port. We've got uh, one gig and we've got 10 gig. Uh, switches in this unmanaged category. We got PoE, we got PoE Plus, we've got non-PoE. So a good amount of switches there. We, we probably have somewhere in the ballpark of, you know, 30 plus switches in the unmanaged category. Now, as you can see here, look at this name right here. So that we, the naming convention GS305. So I'll kind of share kind of as we kind of talk about what this means. GS we obviously just talked about. GS means it's a gigabit switch. The three is going to be the series of the switch. So this is a three series. Um, these are meant to be very heavily, heavily priced, you know, very competitively um, out there in the market. Um, there, I would consider them as maybe like a, a small home type switch. You really want to put this in the business category, although people do use it for the business, and that's totally fine. But there is another switch out there that's a GS1. And that one series is the first entry level and the very first kind of the uh, business category, meaning it does going to have a uh, business warranty on it. It's going to have you know, that five-year warranty, whereas this has a, a three-year. Um, it's going to have a next business day replacement on that one series, whereas this one uh, does not. And so there's, you know, there's kind of some benefits when you go with the one series. That's not much heavy, but not much difference in price between the one series and the, five, and the three series. So if, uh, you know, it, it, it's worth a couple extra bucks to have a, a replacement program and kind of the business grade and and uh, you know those kind of things then then the one would would work for you just well and that's one we I would say is is probably a better option to go with especially for the price point but so that's going to be in our on our unmanaged switches if you want here's a link here if you wanted to go and take a look at those and and you can see a huge list of all those ranging and just look for those naming schemes that we just kind of talked about and uh, and you'll be able to kind of determine what the switch is so this Three is the series, and then, then, then we see a zero five, which means it's a port count. It's five ports. 
Skeletor plus managed switches, right? So this was uh, this was where Neki really also does a really really great job with these these switches, right? Is it kind of meets in the middle where you maybe don't need a fully managed switch. You don't need all the craziness of a, even even a smart switch. You don't need to go into the in depth, but you just maybe just need a basic VLANing switch. You need maybe a QoS type of thing, and that's really all you're going to be playing into. Plus switches where you want to go and where you want to be. Um, these do fantastic at doing VLAN and QoS that's automatically configured, super easy. Again, it's pretty still plug and play. You don't need to go in and really configure anything already. Um, it's already ready to go right out the box and, and go in and, and work just well for you. Probably got like 20 switches in this category too as well. I have a slide at the end that'll kind of uh, shows quantity of each one that we've got in each category. But uh, yeah, again, anywhere from ranging from one to, to I think 48 ports on these plus switches and just just solid solid switches here then our smart manner switches you know there was a lot that i wanted to put in here and there was i had a few slides that were built out in here because of how much information is on here but then i decided hey let's consolidate it all into one and hopefully it's not a, too much to to read here but this is where really Netgear shines and not very many people know but Netgear was one of the very first companies out there to introduce the smart managed switches out there in the world um, back in I want to say like the early 90s or late 80s um, Netgear came out with that and so when that happened um, we came out with the very first smart switch and then when that happened we found a really big niche in the market that was definitely needed again people who didn't need fully managed but wanted some sort of management capability so we came out with these switches here. It does have some great features. As time has progressed, we've actually introduced this, this uh, the uh, smart capability, and we introduced it into the cloud. And so that's where we're kind of seeing right here for the Insight Managed Smart Cloud switches. Now, Insight's been around. If you haven't seen a webinar about that, you should take a look at the webinars that I've done on that. But Insight has been around for probably about six or seven years or so. And you know, at that time when it was introduced, uh, there were switches that did not have Insight, and then new switches were coming on that did have it. So there's quite a bit of time that went through that some switches had it, some switch didn't. So it was kind of confusing to know which ones had it and which one didn't. Now, seven years later, for the most part, all but maybe one or two exceptions, exception switches, there are going to be... Uh, most of these switches are going to have the insight or the cloud management built into the switches to have that cloud management. These also now, when we say these do powerful layer two or layer two plus, this will do like static routing. And that's one of the big kind of features that some people look for when they want to have that. Still, we'll do the same thing that are, that are plus switches. We'll do the VLAN capability, QoS, um, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Gosh, we've got a lot, a lot of switches in this one too, is this category, PoE, PoE++. This is where you'll see a lot. If you see a single P, almost every single switch that we're introducing that's gonna be in this category, if it has a single P, just know that it is gonna be PoE+. Netgear really feels like that's that's the way that, you know, you might as well just go with the cost of PoE that it's been. You might as well just go PoE+, plus then rather than just standard PoE. And so even though you might see some SKUs out of a single P, if you look into the data sheet, you'll see on the data sheet that it has PoE+, plus or, you know, 30 watts of power per port. Um, if you see PoE+, plus with a, a double P in the name, it just means it has a higher PoE budget, still 30 watts of power per port, but just a higher, um, higher uh, PoE budget, overall budget. But... Uh, Again, a lot of switches there. If you again, if you haven't seen that insight, I've done a few webinars on those. Definitely go check those out. Those are definitely worth a good, good watch and a good look at to to see and, and to uh, to learn about. Now let's get into our fully managed switches. This is where not a lot of people know that what Necker plays in, and this is where I love kind of showing the uh, the Necker capabilities and um, what people go, wow, I didn't know Necker had that. Um, and so as we kind of first talk about, here's things how it kind of came out. We first introduced our going to be our M4300 series. Our M4300 series did come out about mm, seven, eight years ago. And this was a great core switch. And we had, we started to introduce some AV stuff into this. You know, there's a, there's a big AV market out there. Hopefully some of you are out there on the call who do AV or, you know, if you're in networking, you still probably know of a bit about AV. Um, but uh, AV started to be kind of really taking off, especially over IP. In fact, Netgear was a founding member of the uh, AV over IP Alliance, which is basically just taking uh, AV instead of over an HDMI cable, it's going to be over uh, Ethernet cable. And whether that's going to be a one gig or whether that's going to be a 10 gig Ethernet cable. And so that's how this one first initially came out. 
and then afterwards, um, AB started to just really take off. And as it really took off, we decided to introduce something more into the AV side of things. We decided to introduce our M4250s. And so this was going to be a switch that wasn't going to quite be, um, as you can see, it looks a little bit different. You got the lights in the front here. It was really kind of meant to be more of an AV. It has an AV GUI, which is actually a completely separate web GUI than just your normal, uh, you know, your normal uh, networking GUI. So this actually has two built in. And that's why the lights are in the front here. It is reverse rack mountable. You can see some ears there and some ears there. It's because it's reverse mountable. So again, it still could be a good switch uh, that uh, that can fit standard networking, but AV was just taking off. And so it's kind of marketed towards the AV switch. And uh, this is where AVB comes into play and really shines right here. If you are dealing with AVB or audio and video bridging, boom, right there, that's where you want to be, especially if you're doing AVB over one gig. Then we've got our M4350. This is going to be the big brother, basically, to the M4300. This is going to be beefed up. We put in and we introduced AVB on this one into the 10 gig range. Um, and we'll kind of, as we kind of talk a little bit more on that here in the next few minutes, we'll share some more details about some great features about here. And then lastly, to our M4500, which is, as you can see, you did see correctly, it's 100 gig. Um, it's marketed AV again, AV over IP, just because it has that separate GUI, but uh, it's definitely a great aggregation switch that we'll kind of dive more in depth here. Let's talk about our M4300 switches. This is going to be layer three, fully managed switches, DHCP server, uh, great switches to do up to from one gig up to 10 gig. Um, we even have an M4300 that does up to 40 gig. So that's a modular switch. That's really, really cool. If you haven't seen that, check that out. But um, lifetime warranty on these things. Uh, this is where stacking comes into play. This is where uh, HAB comes into play. Um, you know, uh, all those kind of good stuff that you like to see in a core switch, you can. You know, one thing that was really awesome that Netgear did too that was unlike anybody else here is, let's see if it's on the previous slide. Maybe it is. You can see half of this switch here. And this is a half width switch. And so Necker came out with a switch that's uh, basically it's one U, but it's a, it fits into a half of that U. And this uh, half width switch means that you can put two, for example, if you wanted two uh, 24 port switches, you could have 48 port and a single U with dual controllers. Uh, something really kind of cool and really neat and, and you don't really see very often. But that was one of the things that really helped take this, take the M4300s off was those half width switches and, and its capability. And its price point is super great. And super dependable. That's why they've got a lifetime warranty. Again, that is a true lifetime warranty, guys. It's not like a limited lifetime where, hey, after its end of life, it'll be good for another couple more years. It's nope. This is a full lifetime warranty. So should anything happen, next business day replacement. These are fantastic switches. Then came obviously the M4250. AV was taking off. We're like, hey, we need to make something for more of the AV guys. Um, and so that's kind of what this was designed for here. Um, they do a lot of things when it comes time to our AV switches. Anytime you're dealing with multicast traffic, um, you know, there's a lot of difficulty that goes into multicast. You're dealing with a lot of IGMP stuff, IGM, IGMP query, IGMP fast leave, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, those automatically, a lot of those features come pre-enabled into the switch. And so meaning uh, it, it, this is almost, uh, this is pretty much a plug and play if you wanted to do like uh, multicast traffic. Um, so that's why it says fast and easy configuration for AV. If you guys are in the AV, you definitely need to be checking out these switches, uh, especially right out of the box. This is where we're just talking about the IGMP stuff that uh, super awesome. And again, you, know, you can adjust the quiet mode. So if they are going in a nice, in a little area that you want them to kind of be a little quiet, that's what they've got here for you. Um, <laughs> again, super awesome for, for the AV type of stuff here. And then here's our M4350s that we're kind of just talking about. This kind of took, see the M4300s, they didn't do AVB. The M4250s came out, they do AVB, but they do it over one gig. So then kind of came, well, hey, we want the M4350s to do AVB over 10 gig. And so that was kind of, that's how we kind of com, com, did a combination of our M4300 you know, with the, the M4300 and the M4250. And so these M4350s, we do have switches that... Uh, 1 gig, 25 gig, and even up to 100 gig on some of the switches, which is crazy, but uh, it's very true. You know, uh, we do see we are seeing more and more people deploy something like that, especially in, in very large high end. Um, you know, uh, we just put one in, I want to say, in a, in a small college stadium, you know, nothing too crazy, but uh, something that, that, that these can be replacing like matrix switchers. And so, in groundbreaking AV GUI, that's the separate GUI management, multicast, and, and 
guys, these are fantastic switches. Again, beyond lifetime warranty. So all of these switches are going to have a lifetime warranty on them. Um, so keep that in mind. And then lastly, our M4500 switches. This is where I really, I really love that 99% of the people go, I did not know Netgear had these types of switches, right? When you think of Netgear, a lot of people think of, hey, I, it's my home router, or you know, I've got a Nighthawk at home. Um, but then when you say, well, actually, you know, Netgear does the business, and they're like, well, I, well, I don't know, I'm a little concerned I, for a home con company, why would I want them for my business? And you're like, well, they do a lot of business, and they do, they do switches all the way from 1 gig to 100 gig. And they, wow, pops up some ears. Um, great aggregation switch, super awesome. There's a single pane of glass that used to be actually uh, NMS 300. It's now called Engage. There's an Engage controller that has that has these uh, that have that management capability, and so. Um, you can take a look at that uh, on our on our website. It's a free download. You put it on. I like to say put it on a thumb drive. Uh, you know, put it on a zip file. Put it in. Put it into the, to a computer. Load it up. Boom. You, you've got it ready to go. That's that's completely uh, completely free to have that uh, management. So it's just kind of a good a little a good little area of what and when to apply where. Right. The M4250 great for the access to the edge switches. Right, for those, uh, especially for those AV guys, the M4350, really great for even a core switch. You know, just because, again, just because the switch is marketed AV, doesn't the same mean it is solely for AV. It's just a, it's a marketing way because it comes with the AV side of GUI and it also has um, reverse mountable and, and those kind of stuff that tend to go with AV. But it's, it's still, these still great core switches here. Uh, fantastic things to have here. Now, if you do have any AV projects or you're doing on anything AV, whether you know a lot or whether you're dabbling in it now, whether you know nothing but you want to get into it. You know, Netgear has a lot of resources when it comes time to the AV side of things. This is this website that you feel free to write down, proavdesign at netgear.com. This is a, an email address that you can email at any time. If you're interested in learning more about uh, the AV switches, you want to see them, you want to play with them, you want to, maybe you need help deploying one, you, you know, these are the guys that you can send out an email to, and they're fantastic. These guys go to kind of our top engineers, a team of about 20 people at Netgear all throughout the U.S. So no matter what day or what time that you send them an email, there's somebody who's going to be replying back to that email relatively quickly and uh, and provide you with uh, information and help and assistance as needed. Um, definitely if you're in the AV, you're going to recognize some of these stuff too as well. And with how big Nick is into the AV things, Nick has got a lot of AV partners. And these are just some of them as you're going to go through, you're going to look and see that, oh, maybe hopefully you recognize a few of these companies. There are going to be some big names on here. Crestron is going to be one of them, Extron, uh, Sony, you know, um, lots of them that I can kind of go on and on about all these uh, different AV guys. But if you do anything with these kind of companies, know that these guys are uh, you know certified Netgear we're certified partners with them meaning we know that our products are going to work well with and work great with them um, here's just kind of a list this is a bit outdated it's about a year outdated so we've got even more than this now but at that time as of around this time last year we had about 200 over 230 partners so I mean we're probably pushing I'd imagine three 350 somewhere around there but uh, take a look and just kind of look over this list. It's in alphabetical order, so it helps you kind of look for if there's one that you're you're, you're specifically looking for. But uh, but again, AV, fantastic stuff when it comes time to Netgear. And at the end of the day, I guess if that's what I want you to kind of remember, it's is Netgear does a lot in AV, and so that's one thing to kind of remember from here. And so let's wrap it up with kind of the few takeaways. <laughs> Excuse me. We've got over 30 switches in the unmanaged, right? Ranging from one gig, 10 gig, five ports to 48 ports, PoE, non-PoE, lots of switches there. We've also got 20 plus switches in the plus category. Great for VoIP, right? Great for um, anytime you're, you're needing uh, basic VLANing or QoS, plus, and that's all you need it. Plus switch is fantastic to go with. You got over 25 switches in the smart slash cloud. And this is true cloud management, guys. The, the cloud software is actually built onto the device. There's not a, uh, a third party. You don't have to have a key. You don't have to have a, a special, uh, you know, you don't have to put any additional servers or anything like that dedicated to to access the, the cloud. These are built onto it. it. has a layer two plus or layer three light as well. Uh, great for those types of deployments. And then we've got 45 switches in the fully managed or layer three kind of category. Great core switching in the AV. Remember guys, that lifetime warranty is super, super awesome uh, to, to have there. 
remember the two categories, the M4250 fits perfectly when you need AVB with the one gig, and the M4350 just fits perfectly when 10 gig is, you need a fully managed switch that's 10 gig capable or more, right? Again, at least the M4350s can go even up to 100 gig. We have some switches there. So keep that in mind when it comes time. And uh, yeah, guys, thanks so much for, for taking the time and kind of watching. We've got a few minutes left. I'll go ahead and pass the time back over to Julie and open it up to see what we got for some questions. Thank you very much, Jordan, for that presentation. I loved all that information you shared with us and that lifetime warranty stuff. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes, I do have questions. Let's get started with the first one. Here we go. Um, are there any new innovations in the Wi-Fi 7 routers released currently here in Q4 2024? Hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting question. We didn't really talk about the Wi-Fi 7, and uh, you know, I don't, uh, I don't have a whole lot of information when it comes time to Wi-Fi 7, especially in the router section, because again, I only see like the business grade. And right now, we don't have a Wi-Fi 7 router on the business side. We've got a lot of home product, but uh, you know, I guess, uh, but you know, that next year is going to be. You know, we're always going to be. Uh, up with technology and up with the latest and greatest. So I can tell you that it's going to be on the roadmap and I'm, I'm certain that we're going to be seeing some stuff come down the pipe, but uh, as of right now, no, and not, not in Q4, not likely. Okay. So maybe um, you'll let us know and it'll, it may be sometime in 2025. So looking forward to that. Webinar. And of course, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we'll look forward to that. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, next question here. Um, does Netgear use AI to enhance network security? That's a great question. You know, as of right now, we do not really use AI. Um, it, it is something that um, we are playing in with, right? I mean, AI is just kind of an animal <laughs> and uh, you got to kind of be cautious with it and, and how you're deploying it and how you're putting it, in. especially when AI is running off the network that it needs to be using for its, you know, it's the blood of itself. Um, and so Netgear is slowly kind of looking at it and how we're encompassing it. But as of right now to this date, no, we don't have anything that's going to be run off of AI when it comes down to security at this time, but uh, I imagine we will and we'll have some great things coming down. Thank you, understanding that very much. Thank you so much for that. Next question here. Let's see, uh, what are the newest advancements in Netgear's ProSafe Switch series? Yeah, um, you know, there's certain things that uh, are coming down the pipe that I that I <laughs> have been disclosed that I can't disclose out on this call. But there are some okay. great, great things coming in 2025 with the ProSafe series. Some great replacements for some previous switches, um, guys. 2025 is going to be a great year for Netgear, especially as many of you know, maybe many of you don't. We've, we've got a new CEO, and we've got who's kind of came down and, and cleaned house and got some a bunch of everybody from top down is is, is new and coming in and and is fired up with getting Netgear, um, pushing Netgear even harder and pushing the, the limits with Netgear. And so 2025 with what's been kind of discussed to me, and I'm sure that that's very little, but uh, what I know so far, 2025 is going to be a great year with uh, some new products coming out. So be on the lookout. Excellent. We're looking forward to next year and uh, our, of course, our subsequent webinars with you, Jordan. So definitely um, looking forward to that. Next question here. Um, how is Netgear adapting to increasing cybersecurity threats? Yeah, you know, it's, it's one of those things that I know that some of the new executives that have come on and some of the new, um, you know, VPs of products and, and R&D and things like that, um, security is up in the upfront in mind right now. You know, Netgear's, we used to play a little bit in the in the UTM space, in the security kind of space, but uh, um, you know, maybe not so much in the cybersecurity space, but uh, very much so on on the firewall type thing. And we we got a little bit out of it, and we've we've gotten a lot of feedback that as far as the security goes, just on on prem security, UTMs, and they want a robust firewall, things like that. That uh, I think again, 2025 20, years going to be some great things to come, I'd imagine. So, uh, but not in cybersecurity, just in terms of, uh, of on prem security. Sounds good. Thank you, Jordan. And like I said, we'll look forward to all kinds of new things next year, just like you mentioned. Uh, last question here. How is Netgear ensuring sustainability in switch production? Oh, that's a fantastic question. You know, <laughs> probably that question kind of stems from uh, good old uh, COVID days, uh, you know, with the uh, 
taken a hit and you know everyone kind of learned not to put their eggs in one basket i.e don't put everything through china and so we've, we've really diversed uh, our, our sources and, and are now manufacturing in multiple different countries um, some that even meet TA compliant so if you do need switches that if you do with government type stuff know that NECU does have some stuff that are TA compliant as well too um, but uh, yeah kind of diversifying where you're where you're manufacturing and making sure that uh, we've got a healthy amount of stock you know which which we do right now guys we NECU is looking at one of the, the healthiest pipelines that I've, I've seen in, in years. I've been with Nick for about six years and we, we're pretty healthy on, on product. And so we've got it ready to go. And I know Microcom's got some healthy product as well, looking to move and cut some deals and get some things going. Thank you, Jordan, for, for all of that. Appreciate it. And yes, very, very true about uh, manufacturing in multiple locations or multiple countries. Excellent idea for many reasons, right? Anyway, thank you everybody uh, for joining us today. And if you, anyone has any further questions, please feel free to contact your sales rep or email us at sales at microcomtech.com. And if you wish to view any of the products mentioned or shown today, please make sure that you remember this webinar presentation has been recorded and will be uploaded to our microcom youtube channel so we can all view it again thank you everybody thank you jordan for your time and all of your valuable information we appreciate all of you and uh until next time and it won't be uh too long it'll be in 2025 which is just around the corner thank you so much everybody have a fantastic day thanks everyone